Matti Friedman sa! Jurusko nie jest was! Do gitar! To już jest in! Kazimy ma show! ポールです。初めてのギター教室<笑><笑> あ、教えます。教えましょう。じゃあ、教えましょうね。じゃあ、教えてください。あ、あ、何キー、あ、ガスキーですか。あ、ほぼ、どっちでもいいです。どれでもいいんですけど。何もケースですけど。あ、はい
Jeremy, hey, take two. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> But with, but with, with the, it's only scratch. Right, 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 right. Just one, so you establish it that it's an A. Oh, okay, yeah, right. One, two, one. Two. <laughs> All right, I want to show you some things today that are very simple, or at least I hope they are simple at the beginning. Uh, everybody, every guitar player knows this chord. It's two notes. There's one on the 12th fret, and then there's one on the 14th fret of the A string. Everybody knows that one because it's the punk rock chord. 
But what I did is I tried to take this very, very simple chord that everybody knows and make a bunch of solo things out of it. So first of all, let's play it an octave lower. Down there. Everybody knows that chord. Uh, what I did is I put it in the key of E minor pentatonic and tried to build it on each step of the scale. So it's going to sound like this. I played the notes separately. That's the tricky one. To get in the a, uh, E minor pentatonic scale, I had to change that to a G. So the shape changes with your left hand. But that's the only one where you have to do it. Then we're back to our regular shape. And there you are at the octave. So super simple. And I continued to take that up the scale in uh, around this position of the guitar. also sounds really good if you put an echo on it. I brought a delay today, and if you put the delay on the right speed, you can play that same thing. I'm going to play this. Very staccato with the delay. That sounds killer. Let's try it uh, going down. Again, all I'm actually playing is, but the trick is to play it extremely staccato and muted with his hand. With the delay. So that's a cool rock thing you can do with a very basic chord and a delay. Uh, I still figure out Bach pieces, Bach piano pieces to try to help my technique and this is um, something inspired by a Bach piece that I learned. Uh, it's just a short piece so it's good for technique and it sounds like this slow. So that's the basic pattern. It starts on E on the B string, 5th fret with the downstroke. That's important. The most important thing is the downstroke. Then an up. does is change the note with your left hand uh, to an F instead of the E. So it'll be uh, then F sharp, G, G sharp if you can, and ending on A. So just chromatically. So it'll be... Uh, lately I've been trying to play things with wider interval skips, so uh, I want to play a, a melody. This one sounds like this. That's the basic melody. Technique-wise, uh, the beginning is very easy because it's just that rock and roll bar chord. Then I skip to the high E string and play B and C. 
And then I go to uh, A note with my pinky. End it with this. So all together. And then I put it in different keys uh, to make a sort of melodic chord progression. And then what's the next one? So I'm going to try that all together with a rhythm. So it'll be like one, two, three, four. I don't know if that's the tempo. But... up the end but it's all right and I'm gonna try it now with uh, the delay the same delay technique and it, it really comes alive when you do that and mute it with this hand so very very tight mute Arigato gozaimasu.
Hey, the first thing I'd like to talk about is something that I do a lot, and uh, you should probably give a try to. Um, you take like a normal scale box, you know, a lot of people don't know a whole lot of scales, myself included, but um, the main one that everybody pretty much has to know is like a blues scale. So when you look in the key of like say A minor, for example, you should probably see it like this. See that kind of shape, but what I'm going to show you is how to see the notes that are outside that shape and how to use other notes um, whereas you would normally use just a normal A pentatonic scale, like in the key of A minor, but you can use other notes and make other shapes out of that box, okay? So I'm going to show you a little example of that. You take something like... which is all right in that box, and... add something like that. So slowly it would look like something like this. The idea is like it's going to sound just as good as anything else in that A minor box scale, but what you want to do is you want to kind of spice up your playing by add, adding notes that aren't necessarily in that particular scale. So um, instead of sounding like you're reading a scale out of a book, you can kind of use just any old note that, you know, isn't in that scale. And if you glide over it quickly enough, it just makes your thing sound interesting and it doesn't sound like a mistake. So, like, basically I'm just playing with those extra notes, so is not necessarily in your A box scale, but sounds kind of cool like that. So if you go... You can add that note in there. I mean, basically, all notes are cool. So the idea is to always see that box scale in your mind and know that you probably want to end up on a note that's in that scale. But make a bunch of patterns yourself and uh, take the patterns and um, add weird notes into them like I just did. So the first example would be this one. Which takes you normally to a very basic note, which is the root note A right there. So uh, that would be one thing to do. Okay, with the same idea of what I was saying before um, about staying in the A minor, you know, blues. It doesn't have to be minor. I, I try to, you know, not always think A minor and major are separate all the time. I like to mix them both together whenever possible. So with that same idea of visualizing that A box, what we want to do is add some other notes to that. Okay, so... <laughs> So this could be a very typical blues phrase, but if you break it down... You break it down, it's got all kinds of notes that aren't in your blues scale. If you stay too much in that blues scale, too much without like branching out of it, it kind of gives you that kind of hippie sound, you know, which is cool if you like hippie music, but... Um, to make it sound a little bit more interesting, you just got to try any other note that's in there. So that one example I just showed you. Okay, the idea is to, uh, instead of seeing everything into one big scale that you just go up and down, the idea is to like put little chords and little chromatic runs within what's kind of loosely termed the 
A box scale. So we're going to wind up being still an A like in the other passages, but this time we're going to play a few uh, arpeggios and a few uh, um, chromatic type of runs within the same thing. So follow me here. <laughs> The idea with that is I'll play it really slow now. Right now, if you take the beginning of it, very major pentatonic sounding thing. It's very normal up to there. That's where it gets a little bit more interesting. It's chromatic, and it kind of takes you out of that pentatonic feel for a second. So you go. Then you get chromatic again. And the reason you do this is because it makes it easier to do this little chord here. So, so you go. That's the type of thing that when I hear like in a solo, I get impressed by because it sounds like every little thing gets chosen rather than just like playing straight up and straight down. Every little pattern has like its own little, it's like a little trip, you know, like a little journey within its, it's hard to explain this, especially because uh, I haven't talked guitar stuff in English in like three years. <laughs> but um, anyway, break out of your normal scales by like always remembering where they are and where you're going to intend on winding up at the end, but uh, uh, trying to break out by little chords, little little arpeggios, little chromatic runs, and a lot of your basic stuff. That's basic, but then you go... Oh, sorry. Just for a second, you break it out and do some weird stuff. So just kind of break out from the normal stuff and try any note and you'll be surprised that almost every note is going to sound pretty cool.
Dozo. Dozo. Okay, I'll go ahead. This is Paul Gilbert. Thank you for watching this DVD and reading this issue of Young Guitar Magazine. It's my favorite magazine in the whole world for guitar. So uh, enjoy it as much as I do. Maybe even more because you can probably read it. Uh, the other thing is I want to give you two bits of advice, and they contradict each other. The first one is that I want you to practice as much as you possibly can, and don't think about it as practice. Think about it as playing the guitar. Because playing the guitar is so much fun. What job on earth could you have to be more fun than playing the electric guitar? I gave myself that advice and took it, and that's why I'm mostly deaf now. So my other piece of advice is to wear mini set as much as you can to save your hearing, and, uh, and that way you can play for like 100 hours every day and still hear at the end of it. Uh, and that's it. And my other advice is to listen to Marty San because he is, uh, uh, what do you call it? Atama ga... Warui. No, E. E, E, E. Arigato gozaimasu. Marty desu, kare sama desu. Mini yoku gomatte jan kono DVD. Hontoni, hontoni, advice ippai haitte masu yo. Kare nankai mo nankai mo mite kudesai. えっと、この雑誌も本当に細かくまで見てください。だってなんかヤンギターって便利じゃないですか。で、僕とポールさんもなんかアメリカに育ってたんじゃないですか。えっと、あそこでなんか全然そんな細かいギター、あのギター雑